Thank you for using Dreamtech Splice. I'm Mitko and in this video we'll delve deeper into the Spline Computer component. Last time we learned about Spline Edit Mode and now it's time to take a look at the Spline Computer panel underneath. Expand it and you'll see the core properties of the Spline as well as some tools which hopefully will make your life easier in certain situations. First of all, let's take a look at the 2D mode. In 2D mode the Spline is automatically flattened and the workflow is optimized for 2D or in other words, it's simplified. If you're making a 2D project, you can go into the properties and check 2D mode for newly created splines. Now continuing in 2D mode just for simplicity's sake, let's go over the different spline types in Dreamtech splines. And we offer 4 of them. Cut New Rom makes it easy to set up a good looking spline, but it doesn't give much control. Let me just get this out of the way. Busier will give you the greatest control as you get to manually place your tangents, but it takes more time to fine tune. B spline will give you a very smooth curve, but the spline does not go through the control points. And linear gives you no smoothing at all. Changing the spline type will immediately change how the curve looks and behaves. Now if we take a closer look at the spline, we'll notice that it's actually not perfectly smooth, but rather it's a collection of straight lines. This is because Dreamtech splines uses a caching method in order to optimize performance. Each spline is approximated and broken down into samples. How many samples there are is controlled by the sample rate field here. So if I ramp it up, the spline is going to get smoother. And if I turn it down, we'll get a more jaggy spline. Think of it as the resolution of the spline. Just keep in mind that the higher the resolution is, the more memory the spline takes. Now luckily for performance, Dreamtech splines only compute the samples in the region of editing. So if you move a point, only the region around it gets recalculated. And note that it's also possible to compute the raw splines using our API if you need truly great precision and perfect smoothness. And in order to visualize the spline samples better, I can go to the Editor Properties panel, expand it, and then toggle Draw Thickness. Each one of these lines you see is a spline sample. And the thickness itself is defined by the spline point sizes. Modifying the size of a point modifies the thickness in the region of the point. Now take a look at the sample distribution. If I put points closer together, the samples get denser. And if I move points further apart, we get the opposite effect. This could be a problem in some situations, especially if you're using splines to generate geometry. Your meshes will be stretched in some regions and then compacted in others. To counteract that, we have the uniform sample mode. I'm gonna switch to Catmill ROM for simplicity. In uniform mode, spline samples will be distributed evenly across the entire spline no matter how close or far apart are the control points. There are drawbacks to this, however. The first thing is that it takes longer to compute because it calculates distances in addition to everything else. The second one is that modifying a single spline point will now cause the entire spline to be recomputed. Basically, uniform splines are heavier. The third sample mode is the optimized mode. And no, it's not faster, it's still heavier than the default mode. What Optimize does is it removes samples based on an angle threshold. So if your spline has a lot of straight segments, this has the potential to save lots of memory and polygons, especially if you're using splines for mesh generation. Moving on, splines do not update each frame during runtime. That only happens when a change is detected, and the update mode properties defines when to listen for changes during the runtime. If you're working with physics, for example, you might want to use the fixed update. You can also leave it to none and the spline will stop updating automatically. In this case, during runtime, you need to call the rebuild method from your code or click the rebuild button in the inspector in order to refresh the spline. Finally, if your spline has more than three control points, you can close it into a loop. This is done by clicking the close button and you can break a closed spline by clicking the same button, which now is called break. And if you have a point selected, clicking the break button will break the spline at this point. And this is it. I think we're now ready to start using splines and actually make something with them. And we'll do that in the next video. On an unrelated note, if you own an Apple device, we recently released our game Lifeslide on Apple Arcade and it would mean a lot to us if you tried it out. It's made using Dreamtech splines and our Endless Runner plugin forever, so you can see those two in action. First month is free and you can unsubscribe at any time. Thank you for watching and see you next time.